my own world of make believe. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross out the ones who heard my cries and watch me weep. I love everything. Fire spreading all around my room. My world's so bright, it's hard to breathe, but that's alright. Hush. What's up guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to be taking a look at the external GPU dock that I created for the Steam Deck rocking a RX 580 which is a pretty good card you'll see in the video. Let's check it out. With the Mark 8 backplate it is a pretty simple setup. All we gotta do is pull out our cover plate for our SSD. Then after removing the SSD, just go ahead and plug the M.2 to PCI X16 adapter to the port. Place our foam down for our compression fit and slide in the cover plate. Place the Steam Deck on our custom built stand. And then we get to dongling. We're gonna use our Anchor 757. You don't necessarily need to use that, but whatever dongle you have, at least there needs to be a pass through up up to 65 watts on it uh, this one has a pass through I believe of 100 watts and a 10 gigabit bandwidth um, which is that same port on the Steam Deck 10 gigabit and uh, we're also gonna attach our SSD using a Sabrent M.2 to USB-C adapter so we can plug in our data and that dolphin fell out of nowhere it must be the poltergeist <laughs> um, but, stupid joke um, what I'm doing right now is I'm just setting up the power cables, but I want to talk about the peripherals real fast. We are rocking a Samsung G5 32 inch 144 hertz 2K monitor um, and our mouse and keyboard are this really cheapo Red Dragon ones I found on Amazon. Um, it was less than 30 bucks. Um, they're RGB. I think they're pretty great. That mouse pad was two bucks. That was pretty legit. Both of those, everything combined was like a $30 thing. I like it quite a bit. Actually, I kind of like it actually more than my Razer setup, but the mouse auto turns off, which you have to click to turn it on. It's just super annoying. Maybe I can figure out a way to turn that off. But other than that, we're actually going to add an additional dongle. It's going to be a USB 3.0 to a 3 splitter, and we're going to do that to just get more power for the external fan that is on the Mark 8 backplate and to plug in an additional um, controller. As for the main event, the external GPU dock, it is rocking the RX 580 with a thousand watt power supply. It is overkill, but it's what I had in hand without buying new ones. And it worked out great because everything is perfect and all the cables are hidden. So I started off my testing here in Cyberpunk 1080p. Uh, remember this is a 144 hertz uh, monitor and we're gonna, not gonna get anywhere near that. <laughs> Um, for the most part, the game plays pretty well on medium settings, um, and we are staying steadily above 50, but we do drop into the mid to the low 40s at times, the frame drops. If you take a look at our CPU and GPU usage, we are pretty much break even, meaning it's a well-balanced system, and that's why I was talking about in my previous video about the RX 580 is a great pairing to the Steam Deck because anything more than that you're kind of just throwing money away. Then I went ahead and ran the benchmark and we got a pretty pretty good score. We got a 55 uh, which I think is great considering this is like a eight-year-old GPU in a four core eight thread freaking APU so I'm pretty happy with that result at 1080p. The next game we tested was Starfield at 1080p and let's just give a big shout out to CD Projekt Red because this is the most unoptimized trash gameplay I've seen by far. What is Bethesda doing? CD Projekt Red has well optimized this thing for an 8 year old GPU to and run on a 4 core APU. It, it is ridiculous how a company that's worth billions cannot freaking 
optimize their game very well. I'm not even going to show the rest of the footage. It was a hot trash. It was trash. Do better, Bethesda. Do better. The next game up is Starship Troopers on medium settings, 1080p. We, uh, you know, it's not good. It's not good. We are in the mid to low 20s uh, when the scene gets busy and we drop into the 15, <laughs> 15s when it, when it does get even busier. Um, not a very well optimized game for our current setup. Um, actually not a very well optimized game at all, but man, is it fun. So I wouldn't. T don't take this gameplay as a precursor of whether or not you should play this game. You should definitely check out Star Troop Troopers, one of my favorite games out right now. But if you are playing on a Steam Deck on external GPU, do not, because <laughs> it does not play well on a RX 580 and a 4 core APU. Next game up is a oldie but a goodie, Grand Theft Auto 5, and we played really well on 1080p very high settings um yeah we're getting well above 60 frames um it's it's great it looks great it plays well and it plays so well i had to test it out on 2k here we have some 2k footage in a fight scene and you'd be generally surprised but our frame rate got better for some real weird reason maybe it was the highway bay was this scene one thing you'll notice real quick if you if you were paying attention to the last scene, our wattage has increased by 40 watts, if not more, almost 50 watts our wattage has increased. And I do not know why that happened. Um, the RX 580 is rated for, I believe, 180 watts, but the most I've ever was able to pull was 140. At first, I was thinking it may be the single PCI 8 pin I plugged into the GPU through the power supply but I don't think that's the issue because that that cable alone is rated for 150 so that plus the 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 riser you should be which should be well over 200 watts total so I believe I'm just gonna chalk it up to the fact that we are we're playing uh, on m.2 you know our gpu is attached to m.2 port and i will just assume i don't want to dig any deeper because i don't want to get into the weeds on it but that that is limiting our capability of wattage and overall it does reduce the amount of horsepower you're going to get from your gpu the fact that we are connected to m.2 but overall looks great in 2k next up we're in Fortnite at 1080p medium settings and we're getting some pretty decent frame rates right now. I wouldn't be using the setup if you were a competitive Fortnite player, but if you're a casual like me, go for it. Um, 80, 90 frames, sometimes picking 100 is great. It was good enough for third place, so hopefully it would be good enough for you. Last game I'm going to test out is a AAA title, uh, Miles Morales, Spider-Man. And um, to be quite frank, 1080p is hot trash on a 32-inch display that we have here. It is so garbage, even though we are getting about 55 frames um, uh, dropping into the mid-40s while um, pretty demanding scenes. So I'm pretty happy with the performance, uh, so much so I tried it out on 2K. And boy, does it look good on 2K. Um, yes, we get less frame rates. Um, we get about a 15% drop in frames, but it looks better. I can play. This is very playable. Um, 2K looks great on Miles Morales. It looks so much better than it did at 1080p. But remember, if you had a smaller monitor, it wouldn't be that dramatic of a pixelated trash that we were just seeing in the previous footage. But yeah, definitely. Miles Morales is very playable on an RX 580. All in all, I am really happy with this beast of this system that we created. It's a portable external GPU and it's perfectly geared for the Steam Deck. If you looked at the footage, you'll notice that a lot of times our GPU was always lagging behind our CPU and the fact at most titles like uh, Cyberpunk, you almost saw a 
pretty much dead even uh, utilization between the both. So I don't really think it's super necessary to get a more expensive GPU. If your ultimate goal is to tie a GPU to your Steam Deck, I think an RX 580 is plenty. You get, get away with a 5700 XT would actually be better in my opinion, but 5700 XTs are still going for pretty good money. Uh, considering RX 580, if you get a, a mining version, you can get 50 bucks, guys. You could build an external GPU uh, with the power supply and dock for like less than 150 bucks. And I think Asus was selling theirs for like a thousand for the cheapest model. Um, yeah, let's not do that. No, that's a big no for me. Um, but ultimately, um, would not rec. I guess the question is, do I recommend doing this? Do I recommend doing this? Ultimately, I would say I would not recommend tying a GPU to your Steam Deck, ultimately. Ultimately, and the main reason why is, let's say, best case scenario, we can get the whole setup for 150 bucks, right? GPU, power supply, um, M.2s, uh, the whole, all the accoutrements, 150 bucks. That's great. That's great savings plus a Steam Deck. Let's say you get the cheaper model Steam Deck, 350. So all in, you're about, you're about $500. And then you got a portable device that is also can be docked and get some pretty dang good 1080p to 2K gameplay. Um, that sounds awesome. But to be honest, if you just bought the GPU, the power supply, and then you bought a fifth or sixth gen Intel, maybe a i uh, i maybe some type of i7 four. So we bought a i7 4550K, I think it was. It's a very old processor. Um, it's a four core processor that that think boosts to 3.6 gigahertz, which is pretty much or 3.5 gigahertz, which is right where Steam Deck is. If you tie this graphics card to that system, you're going to get better performance because you're not handicapped by the M.2 to PCI X16. And you can get one of those. I got one. I got two motherboards and a CPU with RAM for 80 bucks. So what I'm saying is if you're going to go through all the faff, right? If you're unless you're a psychopath like me, you're better off time and money to get your Steam Deck, be portable with it, and if you want a home rig that can do 1080p, 1080p, 2K gaming, you could buy some really good used stuff, a RX 580, a fourth gen i7 K variant. Make sure it's a K variant. It's, it's still four cores, but it's gonna be better than any i5s you're gonna get. Um, and you can even get other things cheaper than that. You can get some 7th gen Intel i7s for around that price. Maybe not the motherboard and the RAM like I was able to find. But if you do a little bit of shopping, you can get some pretty good deals. And the fact is you're going to get about 30% better performance, if not more, from a rig like that using some really old items uh, versus going through all of the rig maru of plugging a GPU into your uh, Steam Deck. It's just, it doesn't make any sense because it is not that much greater uh, when you when you take it in the grand scheme of things. Am I gonna be rocking my external GPU? Um, probably yes and maybe not. I don't know, I haven't really decided that yet. I'm still working on building my new setup here downstairs, rocking the Asus monitor right here. We have the 1080p OLED, this thing is a beautiful beautiful monitor i love this thing um but then i also was looking at some other no no but i digress guys thank you so much for watching um i would love to to hear what you think about this whole thing is it was it worth it do you think you're gonna try it do you have any questions of what you need for this and if you have a question about what gpu you should you should get go ahead and leave it in the comments below i do my best to answer every single comment because um i really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these videos especially comment on these videos because that really helps with the algorithm um and i'm just very appreciative one more caveat and I don't know if it will be out as I air this video. I don't know. But I had a great comment earlier that I responded to today. 
and it was regarding um, the back plates and international shipping. And I'm not saying these black plates are flying off the shelves. What I'm saying is international shipping is really expensive if I'm sending stuff from the US. And if someone wants it and they have a 3D printer, I mean, by want it, I mean my back plates. I, I chose not to release the STL files of the custom backplates I did because I was so worried of a company like JSOX stealing my ideas again. Um, but then I was so worried about protecting my ideas that I forgot what these ideas were actually for. And the ideas were for you, the user. I mean, my viewer, you, my viewer. Um, so if you're overseas and you can't afford a shipping or the shipping is just too high, but you have a 3d printer, um, I should make these files available to you because who cares? JSOX is going to copy me regardless, regardless if they have my SDL files or not, it doesn't matter. They see something that looks good or any company. I'm not saying they actually even copy. I don't even know if they actually copied me. Maybe they just had a great idea. Just like I, your boy did. I don't know, but what I want to do is I am going to make the files available. I don't know if I'm going to do it at the time of this video, but I will. And I do plan on making the files available and I'm only charge like five bucks. What, whatever. If you want these files and you want to 3d print them yourself, $5, you can have the SDL files. And if you just are looking for some of the other projects I have, um, or just the the image of the STL file of the Steam Deck backplate. I have that free on my website. All that stuff is free. And I have some of my other stuff on there too. They're all free set for these ones. I'm going to charge $5 for this. And I think that's more than fair. Um, I just hope people don't repackage them and then resell them. I'm just, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to go on hope that people don't do that. And if you do, you know, such is life. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you on the next one.